Andy here at Maltech again and uh, with another ATV suspension video. Today we're going to talk about extended and compressed links on shocks and how to fix them and what we do to fix them here in the shop. And it's not so simple as most might think and why it's so important too. Uh, the main thing is why is it so important to have the correct up travel down travel of your shocks and that is you don't ever want to hit your frame on the ground so most people sell shocks as extended length so a 16 and a half eye to eye or 19 and three quarter eye to eye well you also have to look at the compressed length and the compressed length matters like I said you don't want to hit your frame on the ground so if this shock fully compresses and your frame is hitting the ground right now then it's too short you need to have that lengthen now another problem is let's say the compressed length is too long so it's not compressing as far that's not good either because we have travel that you could gain there you're actually limited in your travel you could you could gain some travel back by having a shorter shock compressed length extended length is important also to get your ride height correct if you don't have the eye to eye measurement right of course um, spring rate has a factor to play in there too to get your ride height correct also uh, due to what your leverage ratio is but that's extended and compressed you have to have them both you can't just buy a shock off extended length now to figure extended length all you do is just measure from the center of the top eye to center of bottom eye and to figure what your compressed length is you take extended length and you subtract off shaft travel externally so I don't know if you can see this on camera or not but we've got about four inches of shaft travel so if this is a 16 inch eye to eye shock minus four inches the compressed length on this shock is 12 inches now we're going to talk about how we fix these let's say let's say our shock is too long how do we make this shock shorter extended length so there's three ways we can do that we can either take and put a different shaft in it this is a shorter shaft and to make that longer we'll put a longer shaft in it that's one way we can also go from a shorter body to a longer body that's going to extend it out or we can also remove internal spacers and let me grab one of those I'm actually making some of these right now on the milling machine we can remove one of these spacers internally <clears throat> now one of these features you can't do without changing the compressed length and that is changing a body so if we put a longer body on it, it also made the compressed length longer. So you have to keep that in mind. Another thing you have to keep in mind, let's say we put a different, a longer shaft in it to make the extended length longer. Well this shaft, when it goes up in here, it stops about here and you see at the top. Now if we put this shaft in, there's no way we could run this shaft with this same compressed length or else this shaft would blow through the top of the shock which wouldn't be good now let's go to a shorter shock so we need to shorten this shock up we go from a longer shaft to a shorter shaft that's going to shorten it up we go from a long body to a short body just like we did but it's going to change our compressed length or we can add internal spacers and notice this spacer is cut and the reason being there's a hole rebound hole that bypasses the piston that hole cannot be blocked off or it's going to change your valving and that's what this spacer does it does not limit the flow of oil around that hole or through that hole so we have to have this style of spacer in there. You just can't put a washer or anything in there. Now let's talk about compressed length. So when the shock's fully compressed down, how do we make 
the compressed length shorter. Well, one way to do it is to take a long body and put a shorter body on it. And actually, we have one more way we can do that, and that is by removing what's called external spacers. This shock has some external spacers. So the way to get it shorter is to remove some of these and that shock will come back farther together. Now let's get, let's say we're hitting our frame on the ground, which we never want to do. So we want to make this compressed length longer. The easiest way is to put external spacers back in it to make it stop compressing as quickly. Another way is to put a longer body on it. And that longer body you have to pay attention because you put a longer body on it it's also going to make our extended length longer. So there's a lot of thinking you have to do whenever we're designing these shocks for a custom setup. Uh, we don't want these shafts to hit up inside. Uh, we have to think about extended, compressed. There's, there's a lot of factors in there. The only thing the shafts do though is make the extended length longer or shorter. So spacers are definitely the easiest way to go. Then we got to take and do bodies. Now some shocks will actually take these bodies out and we can cut them off, but these are threaded inside. So we'll have to recut threads inside. It takes more time. We can do it quicker. Sometimes they're not available. Sometimes they're back ordered. Um, we like to get things out quick. So usually we will cut these and then rethread them. Uh, the elk is big about that too. Um, we actually, these bodies will unscrew out of the top of the shock. Uh, the bad part is not a normal person could do it because these are loctited in. Um, in the bottom you have the shafts. You have to be able to hold this chrome shaft without ruining it. And we have special clamps in house that we use on that. Another thing is these uh, rebound adjustable shafts have a metering rod. These shafts are hollow and you have to set that metering rod just right or you won't have any adjustment down below. The PEPs are, have a, a nut on top and you adjust that nut to get the right amount of travel uh, on each shock. Now this is a non-rebound adjustable shaft. You see it's solid. It's not hollow. So there's no adjustment there, but still getting the shaft out is very difficult if you don't have experience doing it. I hope this helps um, explain more about extending compressed links, how we fix it in-house. Um, hope you understand you know, why you don't want your frame to bottom out on the ground. You should never want that. And also extended length. You can't just buy shocks off extended length. I get too many in. It usually costs you, in a, you'd be better off buying a brand new set of shocks rather than buying a set of used ones and making them work because you're looking oh seventy five dollars for front main springs and about thirty five forty dollars then you got different crossovers you have to buy if you have to do a different body they're eighty dollars or PEPs are like two hundred and fifty dollars we just did a rear one the other day and that's outrageous for a PEP um, and their shafts I take that back that was a PEP shaft rebound adjustable shaft that was so much not the body um, but still, that's that's outrageous. Most people are like, I think Axis are like $75 and uh, Fox. Um, pretty much everyone else is $75, $80 for a shaft. So I hope this helps you out and wait for our next video.